What is up, YouTube? This is Enzo Rides coming at you. Continuing another video on the access port for my 2022 WRX. Today, we are going to be installing, which is very easy, just putting in the uh, import image racing 3D printed access port mount for your AC vent right here. Uh, pretty simple install, nothing too crazy. I literally just got this, uh, this little pry tool. Um, this sits right there. You just pry it up, pops out. Pried it from right here. Um, right here, this sits right here, this kick panel. I just pried the top right there and then just pulled off the rest with my hands. Um, we installed the OBD2 wire. We're running it through here underneath. Uh, first wire, first uh, the wire came out from right here, ran it up to right here, and then pulled it out right there. Very easy. Um, so let's see, a couple things though, on the access port mount, they have another brand, IBR, I build race cars, access port mount. Um, I'm kind of regretting not going with that one just because, you know, as we can see, this is the OEM right here. I mean, look, it has correct venting. I'm, I'm actually probably, I, I am going to buy that one and just, uh, swap it out when I have time. This is import image racings little mount 3d printed nothing crazy um but you can see the mounts just there is no mounts really you know there's just uh, i guess a little vent i mean there is no vents the vents i mean you know i'm trying to get that oem look and feel as well you can see this is a real shiny like plastic um i mean mind you this thing was only 40 bucks 45 bucks i think shipped I got that and the carbon fiber faceplate for the uh, access port shipped to my house. I think it was like 80 bucks. And um, I actually didn't even spend no money. I just paid for shipping just because I had so many points already built up from the exhaust that I purchased. I just used it to purchase this. Um, my my access port mount faceplate should have been here. I mean, my access port faceplate should have been here, the carbon fiber. But something happened to where <laughs> I received the package. UPS dropped it off or FedEx um it looked like it had been tampered with but there was no faceplate it was literally just an empty box it took me a couple days i contacted port image racing i let them know what happened um it took them a while i think they were kind of sketched because you know i let them know like hey bro uh you know and, and i'll post the video as well so you guys can see it so you guys can see what i was talking about i was at work i was all excited on my lunch i was like i'm just gonna install this real quick so i could mob around with the access port legit when i opened the box it was a big box too it looked like it could fit a pair of nikes or something like that in there um legit I opened that shit and it was wasn't even there. I was like, "Yo, is this a joke? Like, what's going on, bro?" I contacted them and they were like, "Man, can you send us like more pictures and more proof, like of the inside of the box and everything?" Like, I mean, it's a twenty five dollar piece. Why would I lie about that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was just inconvenient at the time. I was excited, so I contacted them. I mean, I had no problem purchasing another one. They actually contacted me today, so this has been going on for about like I want to say like four or five days. Um, I emailed them a couple times. They got back at me a couple days. I went without a response and I kind of just gave up actually this morning I was like, you know what? I still haven't heard back from nothing from them about anything uh, You know, it's Monday or today's Tuesday now I gave them the benefit of the doubt Saturday and Sunday because you know it was the holidays Of course people aren't working. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll hear from them first thing Monday I did not today. They actually contacted me. They were like, hey, man We just went ahead and sent you another faceplate, you know, enjoy if you have any issues Let us know, you know, I was like, cool. That's cool, man. Thanks. I appreciate you guys. I mean that was nice so but yeah so that's it you just run the wire right there um and then your access port mount just holds up on there let's see if i can just install it yeah i am gonna be going with the uh i build race cars one just because yeah this one this one looks shitty i mean i'm just being honest it's good bang for your buck if you're not trying to spend the 80 bucks you know but if i would have known i would have just went with that so we'll see though and then i want the oem vents like i said I want everything to function correctly, so. All right, guys, we're gonna get this buttoned up and then I'll let you know how it looks. What is up, YouTube? This Enzo Rides. Just continuing the video on the uh, access port mount and the actual access port itself. So uh, I actually got the uh, carbon fiber faceplate today from Import Image Racing. They sent it through, no problem. I didn't have free shipping, free cost, it was cool. I mean, it was only 30 bucks, you know, after everything's said and done, but. You know, I appreciate the customer service they got back to me. It's all legit. Um, so I'm finally able to mount the access port up here. Just right there, chilling. Uh, I didn't push it in because obviously I don't want it to turn on right now. Um, Don't 
don't leave it hooked up if you park in your garage and you know you want to mount it right there i suggest taking it off the mount because um it'll stay on i guess and it connects and yesterday morning when i came out to start my car after being off all night kind of it cranked actually a couple times over to like if it was dead or something you know so i figured it was that i drove it all the way to work got the alternator going with the charge and stuff um took it off didn't have no issues so i'm assuming that was the problem uh, the carbon fiber faceplate actually looks pretty good. I mean, especially with all the uh, the faux, faux carbon fiber you got going on right here. It kind of just matches the whole thing. So it's it, it's pretty good, pretty nice. Um, but I did want to talk about the uh, Drunkman off-the-shelf stage one tune for the ETS intake. I've been running that now for maybe, I want to say, about two and a half weeks. Yeah, about two and a half weeks. Um, I haven't been able to monitor anything just because, like I said earlier, I didn't have the uh, the mount, the 3M adhesive that COP sends with the access port mount did not actually work. I listened to a couple people. I seen some things about like, you know, heat it up, get it like try to prep it real quick, clean the surface. I did all that and maybe maybe I heated up too long and the adhesive just kind of burnt off didn't work no more you know it wasn't great so i couldn't mount it i didn't have no mounting solution um i was running the cord under here the cord was running and i just left it go i let it go in there it was ugly i couldn't really monitor it honestly i could take a couple looks at it real quick while driving but nothing major i have been monitoring it though the last like three days three it's been about two days three days since the be since i made the beginning half of this video um i have not had any issues i mean you know, I contacted Anthony, Anthony Barry from Drunk Man Tuning. And, you know, I was talking to him on Instagram. I kind of asked him about the gauges that he recommends I should be running while, you know, driving the car. He gave me all the gauge, uh, gauges. I can't remember them off the top. I think it's, um, I think it's like air fuel ratio. Um, it's knock the, like to see any knock or whatever. Um, the dam, I'm running the dam boost air uh, intake temperatures and something else i forget what it is yeah it's like six gauges though but anyways on the knock the feedback knock it's been at one the whole time it hasn't even moved i mean even on like wide open throttles you know n nothing crazy but still like wide open throttles it's kind of cold weather over here i'd say it's about 60 50 degrees um i haven't got nothing my my uh yeah no knock no no dam, no dam movement at all, neither. My dam is at one. I believe the dam's supposed to be a one, right? I'm not too sure. You could comment below, whatever. Um, but either one, I haven't had any knock, and I haven't had any dam movement at all. It's been constant one. Wide open throttle pulls, you know, load, you know, not under, I don't lug my motor, but just like low, you know, low end RPMs, just normal city driving, shifting at 2,000, 2,500 RPMs. I haven't had anything, so I'm pretty satisfied with this tune. Uh, it it feels good, especially on the freeway, especially in cold weather. I did switch over. I have been using 91, obviously, the whole time. Different gas stations. There's a gas station near me. I mean, this is California. I think average gallon is like 430 right now. They have their shit for like 350. So I've been going there. Might be cheap gas, but there's like four gas stations in the area that are all competing with each other. So it's cheap gas, you know, relatively cheap. Maybe not for some of you guys out of state, but for us here in Cali, that's pretty okay. Um yesterday i did fill up though at shell on 91 i was reading some of the forums and stuff like that people debating what's the best gas or whatever you know i mean we only have 91 here that's the highest octane in california and uh i just went to shell station and filled up on 91 i seen a lot of people swear by it i've always ran shell personally on all my other cars um just because you know i was kind of loyal to the brand but shit started getting expensive bro you know uh, you know so i had to kind of dumb it down a little bit but you know now driving this car i'm trying to give it the best gas possible so i'm probably gonna stick with shell it's a little more pricey but um you know the response the throttle response is like the pool the turbo there is no turbo lag it's just instant instantaneous i mean there is like a quick second where you could feel it try to pick up and like it's just all motor and then the boost just kicks on and it just throws you back in your seat it's cool it's not the fastest car out there we all know this you know what i'm saying i've had I've had two 5.0s back in the day, you know, full built, old school, one of them being an old school Fox body. Those things rip, but I mean, for what this is, a good family car, practical, has all the seating space, good on gas if you're not on it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, this thing rips, bro. I mean, I, I can't lie. It's a fun little daily. It really gets on it, all wheel drive, you know, it's nice. 
So, uh, but yeah, from it's night and day from stock tune to drunk men off the shelf tune. I am eventually going to get pro tuned. You know, I know there's an issue going around right now. It's all over the forums. Everybody's freaking out about, about the RTV, you know, the sealant getting into the silicone, getting into the oil, oil pickup. You, um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of, you know, when I first heard that again, I'm not familiar with Subaru. So I was a little skeptical too. And kind of nervous. I'm like, fuck now I'm going to have to, you know, I can't obviously do it under warranty if they're going to be dicks because they're going to be like, oh, you know, you tuned your car, you fucked it up. But I mean, if there is a recall on it, it doesn't matter if you're tuned or not. They have to perform the recall because that's just what that's what it is. Um, I'm pretty mechanically capable. You know, I mean, I've seen a couple videos. I think uh, Wide Body Nation posted a video like about an hour ago and uh, about, you know, the whole process. He had his buddies at a shop do it. It took them about two hours. So it'll probably take me about, I, you know, I double whatever professional is. I double or triple that time. So it might take me four to six hours, but I mean, shit, it's something I can do. Uh, I seen a lot of debate, a couple people on the forums talking about, it's like a four way oil pickup, four different screens. The RTV sealant is only getting in the bottom of the pickup tube. And that also le that leaves about three more screens, I think on both sides where, you know, on the, on the upper sides where the oil can get in. Some people are saying it's not an issue. Some people are, you know, I don't know. Either way, there shouldn't be no RTV silicone up in my oil pan or my oil pickup for that matter. And, you know, they don't even know if it's coming from the oil pan. They're talking about it could come from the cases. You know, you, you got sealing everywhere on this motor. I, I don't know. I haven't taken it apart and looked at it. Something I might do though, you know, I'm hoping somebody comes out, you know, with some, with some parts. If I can get some headers, that'd be sick. And some, you know, nice little J pipe. I'd probably do all that shit at one time. One banger. I only have 4,000 miles on this car. I mean, it runs good. I haven't seen no issues. I check the oil every now and then, you know, to make sure it's good. It's still a good color. I'm running 532, and that wasn't even my choice. I actually took it to my local Subaru dealer, and when they did the first oil change for me at like 1,200 miles, they went ahead and put 530 in it themselves. So, I mean, there's no way they can deny me warranty with that. I got the paperwork and everything to prove it, you know. So, that's their bad. But, I mean, you know, so I'm running 530. It's still pretty golden. I haven't had any oil consumption issues or anything like that i mean it's still pretty good so you know hoping for the best with this rtv silicone issue i'm you know i'm gonna try to i'm just gonna run it soft i'm not gonna race this thing or nothing like that and just you know hope for the best when i get to it i get to it hopefully there's a recall though you know whatever hopefully the four-way oil pan or the four four-way oil pickup works too like it should and there's no problem so we'll see how that goes but yeah, I do plan to get pro tuned. I do want to pick up an intercooler, a J pipe, and you know, what other things do, would I need? I got full cap back already intake. Yeah, just you know, I'm trying to go full boltons. I don't know if I'm gonna run a flex kit, not yet at least. I want to get at least a couple, you know, a couple ten thousand miles, a few ten thousand, tens of thousands of miles on this, at least 30, 40 k before I start really doing this. This is my daily. I do have the Harley right here, but you know. You guys know it's fucking supposedly for California. It's like a hurricane. I mean, listen, you can hear it out there right now. Supposedly, I'm not trying to ride in that. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, if you have it and you plan to, you're running an intake. Pay the $150. You know, you can get it from Felix Performance or you can get it from Anthony Berry himself. I actually contacted him on Instagram and I purchased directly through him and he had it to me the next morning. I mean, mind you, it was like midnight when I was texting him California time. He was still hitting me up, and uh, I just had to get the serial number for the cob. I didn't have it on hand, so went ahead and did that. He sent it to me, loaded it up. It's been great. I, I love it. I mean, I was having a little issues at the beginning on a cold start where the RPMs would kind of flutter when it hit about, you know, when you get that cold start and it's very high RPMs, about 2,000, 1,500, and it would drop down to below 1,000. I think it was like seven, 800 RPMs. I would get a little surge in between where it would be like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I mean, I still get it every now and then. I don't think it's anything to worry about. It goes over, it goes away after driving a few times. I don't know if that was just the tune itself because the car never did that before the tune. But yeah, man, if you haven't done it, jump on it. it makes the car night and day difference, even if you're just a daily driver. But I mean, if you want to tune, if you're not trying to tune and keep your warranty with all, all the, the propaganda going around and you're nervous, I mean, you know, do what, do what makes you comfortable. Stay in your safe zone, bro, because not everybody has eight to ten grand to blow on a new fucking motor i mean i don't either i'm you know i'm just a jackass being on if I, if we're being honest I, I just like to do fun shit bro so you know it is what it is 
But um, yeah, if you like this type of content, uh, next I'm going to be installing the Perrin Pitch Mount Stop. Hopefully I get some time this weekend to go ahead and make a video on that. Pretty simple. There's other videos out there too, but I'm just trying to keep up my content. So I'll go ahead and record that. I'm waiting on my personalized plates to come in, you know, because I mean, you see, I got that vinyl wrapped over there. But uh, my boy actually just got busted with his Audi in Orange County and tampering with your license plate is a felony. I mean, this is, you know, this dude's, this dude's geeked up. That's my boy. He's geeked up, though. And now he's going to be, I'm, I'm sure they're going to drop it, but now he's fighting a felony, bro. So I'm not trying to run those plates. I'm running paper plates right now. Uh, the Inland Empire is pretty cool. We don't really have no issues, at least in Fontana, with shit like that. Unless you're driving a Honda, they pull Hondas over left and right. But this car's still new, and it, you know, not everybody knows it's a WRX yet, only if you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm okay, but I don't want to risk it. I'm not going to run those plates. Waiting for the plates to come, and then I'll do the uh, Perrin front license plate relocator little bracket. We'll do that as well. Um, but yeah, man, if you like this type of content, you know, if you have any uh, comments, questions, concerns, or you just want to go ahead and let's debate about the ceiling issue or whatever's going on, you know, drop a comment, bro. I love to respond to you guys. I usually respond pretty quick. Um, but yeah, man, like, comment, subscribe to the page. Hell yeah. You guys have a good one. Drive safe, brothers.